Hi there. I've just had the most beautiful day on this pasture. Going over a bit of an area which I know is a bit quieter. I haven't really been filming because I haven't really found anything. But it's been really nice. I haven't done any metal detecting for about two weeks for various reasons. And I just thought, let's just have one day on something that you know really well, just to get used to being back out and, and don't worry too much about finding stuff because um, that's not really important. Just have, you know, just, just, just take the chance to have a really lovely day because actually it was bloody sunny earlier on, even though it's got a bit colder again now. I found a little Roman coin. I'll show you a picture of me finding that now. It's actually quite a sweet one with, a, I think it's one of the sons of Constantine with a soldier and standard on the back. And then I found this rather cool, um, which gave the, 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 the lowest, horrible sound um, that I'd actually went past it. I thought, I'm not digging that, it's just going to be foil. And then I backed up on myself and I, and I did dig it. And I'm bloody glad I did because it's a, it's a penannular brooch um, which has been broken. But that's medieval. That's quite early. And then just here, I found this in an area which I've got to say, I don't think I've ever really done. I've been through it. I've whizzed through it a couple of times over the years and, uh, and with the old days and thought, oh, not, not much on this bit and haven't bothered with it. But I came back I'm just doing it again now as I said probably for the almost the first time well certainly with this machine I found this now no surprise it gave a banging sound I showed the clip of me digging it up I think oh that <laughs> well the pin what was the pin I think has just come off but that doesn't matter I'm, I suspect it's a buckle of sorts isn't it now I mean, these, I think, are they called trapezoids? I, I've never seen one quite like that. Um, I don't know how old it is. I suspect post-medieval. Um, I thought it might be broken and the other half would have gone like that, but no, I don't think it is at all. I, I think that's what it's supposed to look like. So, do you know what? I just don't know. That's, that's a very odd one on me. And I don't know how early it is. I don't think very, and I've never seen anything quite like it. I really like it though. That gave me a bit of hope. And then literally a meter on, this gave the biggest sound you have ever heard. Now, <laughs> it's a really fancy medieval buckle of sorts, I think, because we found one of these bits very recently, and that is it's i can't remember what it's called it's called a box strap end or something like that buckle plate but i haven't but it didn't come with the with these bits coming out now this looks early to me and even more wonderful it's got a w on it for my name western holtz um i mean this is just superb i don't know how broken it is because i think something must have happened beyond that in order for the pin to um come into effect of sorts um it's just incredible. It's one of the most wonderful things I've ever found. And it gives me hope. I've, 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 I'm done now. I've done about four and a half hours and I've only found about three things. But I, I'll, I'll come back here in the next couple of days because I've, I'm going to really concentrate on this tiny little area, which I've hardly ever done, as I said. Um, let's go back to headquarters with this now. We've got to because it's going to be wonderful. And then the next time you see me, I'll be back on this. Um, so... Well, look, let's go. <laughs> Better take these with me because I'm not actually coming back. And that. And put this back. My God, come on. Hi there, and welcome to Temporary Headquarters, which, as you can see, is a lot less cluttered than my setup at home. I'm looking after my son at the moment. Hence, I haven't been metal detecting much, but I have had a bit of time to do some videos. And, this, and the sun is finally out. It's been raining for what feels like weeks. And I've got a tiny bit of token taxidermy here. As a general rule, I'm sure you all know, don't put these in sunlight. Fur and feather and sun do not mix. The sun will completely bleach the colours. But just for two minutes, um, because he does look rather cool like that, especially with the sun on him, um, it's not going to do him any harm. Anyhow, we've got a... <laughs> um, <sighs> Tasky's with me. Anyhow, we've got to be fairly quick today because my God, what a...
time I had in that, in that bit of pasture, I mean, I really did find some absolutely phenomenal things, um, as you'll see later on. Just very quickly, the thing I forgot to photograph at the time, um, I haven't really researched this very much, I just simply haven't had time, but I think it's a medieval, an early medieval annular buckle. You can see just where it sort of, um, or brooch, um, you can see just there and there that it's, it's definitely got much, much thinner and that's where the pin would have been and it would have, and it would have rested on that side. And that's just brilliant. And as, as I said, I mean, th that's quite early. That gave a sound like foil. I was really fortunate to have gone back to dig this because I was going to leave it. Um, as you know, I probably do leave too, too much generally, but it's just because I like to manage my time. I've talked about it a lot. I won't bore, bore you with it now. But then this. Now, the detectinghub.co.uk information below is fabulous for identifying all sorts of things. And they are very, very good on coins. And coins are probably the thing you're most likely to have trouble with because they can get, especially so English hammered coins and Roman coins, they can be very tricky. But out of these two buckles and this one, which we'll see a bit later, I won't show you that now. Um, I put them both up on the both up on the detecting hub. I had a fairly good idea about the larger one, which in this light looks to be rather enameled, but I'm not sure. Um, I had a fairly good idea about that. I had no idea about the smaller one. And in fact, some really interesting um, answers came up on the detecting hub. I'll show you. As I said in the field, I'd never seen anything quite like this. It's really, really cool. And Flamsteed said, put me onto this. Um, from the Portable Antiquity Scheme website. It's a medieval strap fitting, possibly a pendant loop, whatever that is, but alternatively a trapezoidal, as I thought at the time, non-swanks, buckle frame. And here it is here, almost the uh, in, uh, identical thing. They date it from 1240, <laughs> sorry, not 1240, that would be cool. 1250, rather, well, to 1400. And I will leave a link to this below because I just don't have time to go through it all now. Um, but it's basically quite, it's not a common find. This is quite rare. No one's really sure quite how it works. Um, even though, as, you, as we saw at the time, we could see the remnants or the clampy bit of a pin there. That would have gone around like that. And Kath um, from the Detecting Hub also seemed to have a fairly good idea what they might be used for. But to cut a story short, they also say pro probably a pendant loop from a strap, but alternatively possibly a trapezoid buckle frame. Um, uh, it it definitely doesn't continue. It's not broken, that's what it is. Anyhow, that's what that is. That's just brilliant. It's just, it's just such a geometric design, it's mad. Um, just a really tactile object. And then this, I mean, my God. Now, as is fairly obvious, as we said at the time as well, this would have continued into rather a big ornate sort of lyre shaped um, buckle like that. And if you look, and if you have seen um, previous videos, only two or three back. I found a very similar um, box, box strap endy type thing there. And you can see if you look into it where the rivets are, which would have held it to whatever leather it was. Now I went again onto the Portable Antiquity Scheme for this. And also the Detecting Hub were very helpful, um, especially Kath, who is very good on her medieval stuff. And she says they date it to 390 to 420, which is also correlates with this, um, with CJ's buckle page. I talk about this um, website a lot because it's brilliant for buckles. That's a, he, there's a good picture of it here, I'll show you. Um, Kath says, they were first produced in 1360 in France and they came over to the continent from France. Um, arriving in Britain around 1390, they were for the knightly classes. So really quite an upper class piece of kit that. And I also found on the Portable Antiquities, uh, on the Portable Antiquities scheme, website pretty much the identical one well it's not the identical one but you get a very very good idea of how it works and here it is here so i'm just completely thrilled to just my god i mean oh, i get really really excited about things like this and something as ornate and i'm not sure what the lettering on the buckle plate itself says i do think it looks to me like a w or two d's looking at each other but either way anyway thank you very much for listening i don't have to bring tasky up to my um knee today because he's just enjoying the sun down there um and and we come back a couple more times because as i said it, it's worth it so um i'll see you a bit later and let's go back to the fields
Well, well, as promised, I'm back. Doing this section a little bit carefully. And as I said a couple of days ago, I don't do this area very often because it just doesn't feel very busy. But I've done everything else so much that I'm, I'm left with this now. And so I'm gonna do it quite carefully and see what happens. And I've already found two bits of silver, albeit three bits of silver. Um, <laughs> probably best part of 800 years apart, maybe less, because I think this hammered coin, um, because it's got the sort of quadrifoil, quadrifoil bit in the middle there. Now I think, I hope you can hear me okay, it's a bit windy, but, but not too bad and that is shielded, so let's hope you can get a bit um, it's got that quadrifoil bit in the middle of the, the long cross on the obverse. Now, I think that dates it more to sort of Henry V, Henry VI, Henry VII, someone like that. It's not in the best condition, but it's a bloody nice find. And it sounded really foily. This did, <laughs> this did not sound foily. Don't find many of these here. They're... Our American cousins, I suspect, find them in wheelbarrow loads. It's a dime. Now, I think I'm right in saying that. Is that a tenth of a dollar? It's in incredibly good condition and probably made very, very recently. I don't know if there's a date on it. Don't know where they are. Oh, yes, I think they are. I think, is, it, is that it underneath the, um, at the bottom of his neck there? But what, it, that, I mean, that's just beautiful. <laughs> Don't find many of these. And just here, another really foily, foily sound. And I found lots of these up here, but not in this area, so it's a great sign. It's a little Nuremberg Jetton. It's the rose, it's the rose and orb type. And that's just lovely because it's in really good condition, but not particularly early. Probably dates to very late 16th century and 17th century. It's Crywinkle, something like that. I can see Crywinkle. They were the big makers along with Schultz. Some breaking news has come in on this funny little buckle as I was recording these in my headquarter sections. Um, Flamsteed, who is, I think, relatively new to the detecting hub, but a brilliant addition because he, <laughs> he knows his stuff. Um, and he's and he's obviously a good researcher. He sent me a picture, if it is the pendency thing that they reckon it is, of how it would have worked. And it's absolutely fabulous. It's brilliant. So there you have your belt. In this case, with a very similar type um, end to one of the um, the belt itself. And there you have a little bit of metal going round the, the the leather section of the belt to which this is attached. So presumably, I don't know, sword hanger or whatever it might have been, but then you could have attached other things onto that. Um, I don't know, purses, swords, whatever they may, may have been. So thank you very much for that, Flamsteed. Um, very, very helpful onto um, how that would have operated. Um, breaking news over, and I'll take you back to the field. So these things in Germany, in the... Um 16th and 17th centuries but it's a really good sign but I haven't found one in quite a long time so I'm really pleased anyway that's that's it from not having been here very long so let's hope fingers crossed and that made a very strange sound very squeaky I don't find that many of these so I'm pleased with that I think it's a thruppany but I know it's a thruppany bit it couldn't be anything else in that size Queen Elizabeth II 1958 so I think fairly early on in her reign. Um, and just look at that. Brilliant coin. <laughs> well, Christ, there was no way I was digging this live. It sounded like iron with a tiny squeak in the middle of it, which was consistent all the way around, to be fair. My God, look. I mean, that's two foot down easily. Two pinpointers. Not surprising now. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I don't think this is that old. And I know I've seen one. I think it's a sort of spout or something that went into something to pour. It's completely solid bronze. It looks like a dog's head with ears. I, I think it's post-medieval. I don't think these are particularly early, even though I've never found one. And it's completely wonderful. It's a dog's head, isn't it? I just don't know. I've never... I've seen photographs of them. I know I'm sure of it, though. Presumably it's hollow there. Um, and... I just don't know. As I said, I don't think it's very early from the way it's made, even though the face and everything looks quite crude and quite Roman even. I don't think it is. I don't know what they are. <laughs> but it's one of the biggest, biggest items I've ever found. And it's just wonderful. I mean... <sighs> I very rarely dig really big things that deep because I just tend to avoid them if I think it's AI and deep, deep iron or be a very deep, deep can. But that's just wonderful. Let's go back to headquarters. We've got to with this and, and, and find out exactly what it is. <laughs> I've got to lug it around with me all day now. No, I don't actually because I leave it back at my desk when we go there. OK, let's go. Well, this is just completely fabulous. I said at the time, I do find myself avoiding what often what I know to be very, very deep, squawky sounds. Because like most of you probably, I've just dug up too many tin cans over the years. And more often than not, that's what it is. Now, this definitely, as you can imagine, it's solid bronze or copper alloy, whatever you like to call it. Um, it, it gave a really properly deep, big sound. And it was a long way down. You can tell the difference between a big coke can and big um, plow metal and, and, and this definitely once you get your ears in obviously. I don't think I wouldn't have not dug this, put it that way. But um but I don't often find big bits of bronze. I mean this is this is proper heavy. Um now I thought at the time purely because of its design and the condition that it must have been post-medieval. It didn't take me very long because I'd seen photographs of them before. I've seen, I've seen other people finding them. T to find several examples online, including a few on the Portable Antiquities Scheme. And they look very, very similar, all these ones. They seem to be peculiar to sort of the 1400 to 1500 um, period. And they're almost always dog's heads. I put it on the detecting hub and, and just asked the question, are they is it, are they just dogs or do they do, do they come in other animals and um, calf and um, said that apparently you, you get lions occasionally um but it just looks quite modern and quite sort of cartoony but he's just wonderful so it's a medieval um spout and it would have sort of um well i tell you how it would have worked because i tried to find a picture of what of what sort of vessel or you are um this is that this tends to get attached to and the answer is that you that we're pretty we're sort of unsure that I, I can't find one single picture of um this and actually this design attached to to the actual the the vessel itself apart from on the colchester metal detecting club which i refer to their website quite often it's a really good reference site they have a good section on barrel spouts and vessel spouts, Euro spouts. And here is a picture, I think, of what, how they think that it would have worked. And you can see um, a handle there and the actual vessel there and the, spout, and the spout coming out of the side. They say similar decorative spouts are illustrated in Bailey, la -di -da, la -di -da, but none of them show how they would have been attached to vessels. The spouts mainly date to the 15th century, although their use may have continued into the 16th century. That is a very similar one here on the Portable Antiquities Scheme website, which again dates it exactly to 14 to 1400, 1500. Um, I'll leave a link to that as well so you can have a look, but there it is. Anyhow, <laughs> there we go. I mean, this hobby is just wonderful, isn't it? In the array of things that one can find from tiny little bits of silver to a socking great piece of 600 year old bronze, which would have once been used to pour, I don't know, water, wine, I don't, <laughs> who knows? But um, that's that. So th thank you very much for listening. And let's go back to the fields.
This has got a chance of being nice as well. I'm a bit worried about my camera. I've forgotten the section that keeps it on the tripod. So it's just sitting on top of it. And it sort of could fall at any minute. Um, it's fortunate it's not that windy. So let me just plug you in. If I keep glancing up the whole time, it's to check that but if that falls, it's quite an expensive little camera that if that falls on the ground from there, it's just going to bugger it up. This is nice. Or at least it would be if I could bloody hear it. It's got that fuzziness and depth that I quite like in this, in this pasture. Anything too bright sounding is going to be a ring pull or a modern coin. That dime we found, my God, that was just so bright. I had to, just in case it was something, you know, at depth. Yeah, it's still in there. Could be another jet and it's definitely copper, I would have thought. Little hammered coin, maybe. No, it's a feral of a pencil or something that you could be mistaken for thinking that was quite fun, couldn't you? If you just, oh, a little Celtic bead. No, it's a feral, modern feral. Well, I found a few of these over the years. Not that many. Someone once said to me, well, they're rarer than Roman coins. And then someone else once said to me, that's absolutely rubbish. I find them all over the place. Well, I found a thousand more Roman coins than I found these. And this, because they were only around these cartridges for about five years. I think something like 1835 to 1840 or something. They, they're not that common. And they're not that common in this condition. I can actually see the make. 12 bore. Ostich, that sounds German. And then Ely maybe. But I've never found one in such good condition that you can actually read the writing on them. So that's quite cool. I mean, not everyone's cup of tea, it's hardly even my cup of tea to be honest. But still, for collectors of this sort of thing, it's probably quite a nice one. There's a bit of work going on over there. You can hear something chugging, but you can also hear curlews. It's, um, so it's about the right time, but it's wonderful to hear. They were nesting here last year. Apparently, um, we, knew, we knew where the site was. Everyone kept clear of it. The, the nest didn't, they, they didn't hatch, sadly. But it's nice to know that you can still hear them. You probably will. I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but the camera might. So if I, if I hear them, I'll whiz you back onto camera. I got really excited about this because it was covered in mud and I could see two bits coming out there of something disc shaped. And I thought, That's, this is a brooch of sorts. It's not, it's a lot later. It's a belt mount or, or, or a stud of sorts. I think it's probably 17th century. Um, finding a few of that sort of era th of today, maybe 16th century. Um, I don't know, I've never seen anything quite like it. It's quite ornate, but it looks fairly um, cleanly made. And it's a new one on me. I've never found this design before. I'm thrilled with it. Um, but, but, but more than that, we'll put it on the detecting hub. It's not quite headquarters worthy, even though it's very pretty. But we'll have a look at it when we do go back next time, if we go back next time. Um, but wow, we've got some really, really wonderful things coming up. Well, this made a lovely sound too. It's a shame it's not a whole one because can you imagine? It would have been beautiful. It's an early one because it's got a drilled hole um, and it's a tiny one as well. Ah. What a lovely little, lovely little crotal bell. It's half a crotal bell, almost a perfect half. Shame it's not a full one. Ooh. This may just be a rifle round, because I've dug a few of these today. I think I'm in a soldiery area. They camped up here during the war. And look, just found a really cool ring. 
God. I'll show you in a second. Not very old, I don't think. It's slightly drawn out, isn't it? It's not sharp and sweet and coin like. But you never know. I mean, I've been digging some big things over the last couple of days. Yeah, that's just still, that's deep. I'll bet you anything it's a rifle round. A big old rifle casing. <laughs> or a big bit of lead, maybe. Either way, it's not very nice. Well, it's a huge bit of lead, but it looks like it's sort of... But it's sort of... I don't know, it looks like it's part of something. Um, it's been, that's been used for something, whatever. That's old, old, old. Um, I mean, it, perhaps to mend something, or maybe it's got a hole running all the way through. Is it a sort of a mangled steel yard weight of sorts? I think so. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's what makes that noise. Now look at this ring. <laughs> so it's, got, it's silvering in the middle with number nine on it. Um, and it's got some sort of... <laughs> anyway, I'm not sure if this one's magic or not. I don't think so. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, but anyway, I'm wishing that it's going to find me gold. Probably a cartridge, but still. They, it's, I've said it before, it's good on copper, this machine. And, you know, you've got to dig cartridges if you're in the mood, as I always say. Still in there. Sounding a bit better. But... About five, six inches. Just there. See what it sounds like now. Sounds like a cartridge. Don't think you're going to hear that. I'm throwing this speaker away after this. Yeah, cartridge. Wouldn't you know it? They just do sound soft. But look. If they're driving you mad, don't dig them, but they, you might miss out on Roman coins as well. Well, that's a jolly nice little buckle, isn't it? I don't think it's particularly old. Well, having said that, actually, my gut feeling was um, Tudor, but I think that's slightly earlier than that, from that sort of design. I really do. I don't know quite... Um, I really like that. I've not actually found a buckle like that before. Um, wow, how lovely. Really cool. Well, if I didn't know better, I'd say that was a cartridge as well. But I'm in the mood for digging everything today. I've got to rather in this new in this new bit. Right on the surface there. Yeah, it's sounding more and more cartridgey. Just 
Да. Not a cartridge. It's a sort of. It's another one of the. Another one of these things you've got to dig because it could be a Roman coin. I know these videos might make it look like all I do is find nice things, and I'm really lucky. I've got some fabulous land to go on, but I spend days and days and days not finding anything either. Someone said recently it really annoyed me. You found a silver, a Victorian coin, a Victorian silver thimble and a Roman coin all next to each other. That just doesn't happen. It does happen. You know, I spend most of my time, like all of you, digging these. I just spend a lot of time metal detecting, far more than I should, but I just, I just enjoy it. Um, but anyway, back to this. You can't not dig these. That sounded good. Well, that's cool. Look, it's another... It's another mount of sorts. We're obviously in a very um, 17th century area suddenly today. I mean, that's lovely. And it gave a really cool, um, well, it was gave a slightly irony sound if I'm being completely honest. Um, it, but it was good enough to dig, obviously, and look, quite deep. All the way from there. Well, I think we might... It's going to do this a bit, I'm afraid. We'll end on this. Big and bright. Crittle bell. Rifle round. It's big and ballsy. They don't tend to be much good when they're like that, do they? But... Well, do you know what? What a bloody lovely thing to end on. I can't believe it. Look. It's exactly like... Um, well, do you know what I thought? I thought it was um, one of those box buckles, like the one we found a couple of days ago, which we zoomed back for headquarters for. You know, those quite chunky buckle plates, like, but I don't think it is. Um, it is, um, I've no idea, I've got a feeling it's something called a seal, it's a Roman seal box lid, I think, because I can see the enamelling on it and the different colours, I'm not going to rub this at all, that is <laughs> quite bonkers really, because I spent a lot of time today not really finding an awful lot right from the beginning. I've been here a long time digging up cartridges and rifle rounds and I thought that was another one. But my God, I'm not going to rub it at all. I'm going to leave it exactly like it is. We'll go back to headquarters. We'll look at it there properly and then I'll say goodbye from there. And that's just incredible. It means I can go home now. I'm starving. I haven't eaten all day. Um, and that's just the best thing ever. Right, let's go. I can't believe it. Um, the... <laughs> I brought several artifacts with me to be able to illustrate these videos from home knowing that I wouldn't be at my desk with all my clutter and all my rubbish and I've forgotten to bring the um the, the little seal box lid but it is absolutely fascinating and that's what it is it's a Roman seal box lid and even more than that I didn't completely know what the function of these things were I thought they well I just didn't know until I've been doing some research right now and I know exactly how they were used now, and it all makes sense. So um, please forgive me for that. But I, what I will do is in the, in the next video, I'll do a little segment on it because we, we, we can't miss out on looking at that. It's a really, really cool um, object. And I think it dates to about the first century AD. So, so, so keep your eyes open for that. And thank you very much for watching the video as a whole. That was fun to make and fun to edit. So um, see you next time.